I'm John Davis, and this is Motor Week. Join us as we find out if a new Mazda CX-9 has what it takes to compete with the best family crossovers. We'll check out some new treads down at Goss's Garage. On Auto World, we review All Fuel's all-time hit parade. Then we'll test a German super sports sedan like none other, the Audi RS7. So come drive with us next. Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, brought to you by Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. Oh, come on! They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Just a bottle of water. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. The Mazda CX-9 had quite a run. Ten years from its early Ford origins up to the 2015 model year. And there was a time when we weren't sure if it would have a successor or not, as three-row utilities are not really Mazda's thing. But that's what it takes to be competitive these days. So for 2016, an all-new CX-9 has arrived. Let's see if the Mazda Touch makes it a standout in a segment full of able rivals. Yes, many impressive three-row crossover utilities have emerged over the decades since the Mazda CX-9 first came online. And many of them have even zoomed, zoomed as much as, if not more than, it has over the years. So the redesigned 2016 Mazda CX-9 has a lot of catching up to do. And Mazda engineers started with the basics, working their magic with an all-new platform, making the CX-9 smaller outside, yet creating a roomier feel inside. Even more sleight of hand was performed under the hood, where a 3.7-liter V6 was swapped for a 2.5-liter Skyactiv G Turbo 4, the first turbo engine to gain the Skyactiv moniker. Horsepower is down 23 to 250, but torque is up 40 pound-feet to 310. So thanks to that extra torque, it doesn't feel any less powerful than before. In fact, torque comes on with an almost diesel-like rush. Dropping over 250 pounds of weight helps too. In fact, at the track, the CX-9 laid down its big torque with an explosive launch. However, the fun stops almost as quickly. Still, 7.4 seconds to hit 60 is pretty quick for a big youth. The transmission is a six-speed automatic. We experience some lag with it, and with each new gear, RPM seem to drop further, taking longer each time to build some steam. The quarter mile was completed in a more leisurely 15.8 seconds at 87 miles per hour. As for bolstering the Zoom Zoom mantra, we found a huge amount of grip through the cones, even when being very aggressive with both throttle and steering inputs. There was also plenty of soft roll. This is a family vehicle after all, along with numb steering. The CX-9 is front wheel drive under normal operation. For optional all wheel drive duty, it uses the CX-5's eye active arrangement, which sends as much as 50% of vehicle power to the rear when needed. A good 129 foot average stopping distance from 60 was delivered with confident all around performance. Away from the track, in normal commuting, the CX-9 handles effortlessly and feels like a vehicle half its size. Mazda explored every avenue possible to quiet things down inside, and their work succeeded. Ride quality is smoothed out as well, yet it's far from floating. But style and substance are more critical to crossover success. As for the first, the CX-9 is a looker, appearing very sleek and sporty, way beyond the previous gen's clunky appearance. 
Likewise, the interior is fashionable, but still on the family side of things, and with signature trim, it's quite luxurious. Crimson Tide fans may balk at the optional Auburn interior theme, but we have no such misgivings. Seven passenger seating is standard, and priority has been given to second row passengers who get more space, as well as sliding and reclining seats. Access to the third row is better, but there seems to be less room there once you get settled in. And there is also less cargo space, 14.4 cubic feet behind the third row, 38.2 behind the second row, and 71.2 with all seat backs folded. Available tech features include a head-up active driving display, an 8-inch Mazda Connect infotainment screen for backup camera and navigation, and LED accent lighting. Available safety systems run the gamut from blind spot monitoring and lane departure warning to forward collision warning and full-on smart brake support automatic braking. Towing capacity remains at 3,500 pounds and trailer stability assist comes standard. Government fuel economy ratings are as good as you'd expect. 21 city, 27 highway and 23 combined with all wheel drive. Though we average just 22 miles per gallon of regular. The energy impact score is average for all vehicles, 14.3 barrels of yearly oil use with CO2 emissions of 6.3 tons. Competitive pricing is a given in this ultra-hot segment. That means a base of $32,420. Expect closer to $45,000 for signature trim with all-wheel drive. The Mazda Touch is very apparent in this vastly improved 2016 CX-9. Its unique look and well above average driving feel are signature Mazda Zoom Zoom. But it also compares quite well to its many rivals in crossover basics with useful space, plenty of features and reasonable fuel economy. Yes, the three row crossover segment is very crowded, but it looks like the CX-9 is primed to Zoom Zoom its way towards the front. For over 100 years, Americans have enjoyed the freedom of the open road, fueled predominantly by petroleum-based fuels. Despite the convenience of gas and diesel, however, fossil fuels are problematic in terms of long-term availability and the damage they are doing to our environment. Now, in our 35 years on the air, we've watched with great interest and applauded the many efforts to develop viable solutions to break our dependence on petroleum fuel. So we've decided to take a look back and forward at some alternative fuel vehicle innovators. In the infancy of the automobile, it was more common to see cars running on steam than internal combustion engines. Electric cars were popular as well and touted for their silent operation. But as intercity roads were developed, gasoline quickly established itself as the most convenient power source for long-range travel. It wasn't until the 1970s oil crisis that the uncertainty of our fuel supply reached our collective consciousness, and even later before its negative environmental impacts became a general cause for concern. Early alternative fuel efforts focused on converting big sedans, pickups, and vans to run on compressed natural gas or propane, a solution that still works today. Commercial fleets, transit buses, and municipalities across the country are embracing natural gas, propane, and electric for their cost benefits, lower maintenance, and clean operation. AT&T has added more than 8,000 CNG service vehicles nationwide, and their total green fleet now numbers over 11,000 vehicles. Companies like Coca-Cola, FedEx, UPS, and hundreds of others continue to lead by example in expanding their clean fleet profiles as well. The Honda Civic CNG showed that natural gas could work in a compact chassis and the advent of safe, convenient home refueling systems took the fear out of handling these fuels. Likewise, the acceptance of user-operated high-voltage electric charging systems took time and steep learning to accomplish, but now, for many, charging their EV is as ordinary as stopping by a gas station used to be. 
GM's groundbreaking 1996 EV1, despite using old school lead acid batteries at first, was really the first modern production car to showcase the viability of gasoline free driving. Nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, and other advanced battery types paved the way for modern EVs and the hybrid gasoline electric vehicle, combining both gas and battery power. Toyota was first to market with a Prius hybrid in 1997, followed by the Honda Insight in 1999. There's no denying the fuel economy advantages of electric power, but EVs and hybrids were slow to gain respect by a driving public afraid they'd have to give up comfort or utility to drive green. No longer limited to subcompact commuter cars, hybrid drivetrains are now offered in nearly every body style and by nearly every car maker. Tesla and even the short-lived Fisker Karma have shown that electric drive cars can not only be viable, but aspirational, with luxury and performance to rival any conventional car maker. And now the most desirable supercars on the road, from the likes of Ferrari, Porsche, and McLaren, use hybrid electric powertrains to juice up their draw-dropping levels of performance. Grassroots efforts to educate America about clean fuel choices have intrigued us as well. Whether it's a CNG-powered Batmobile or the biodiesel-burning Planters Peanutmobile. Call them publicity stunts if you must, but they have made a positive difference in the public's perception of all fuels. And the terrific work done by the Department of Energy's Clean Cities coalitions, banding together local clean energy efforts into a national powerhouse, has displaced millions of gallons of petroleum and reduced megatons of harmful emissions by enabling individuals and fleets to adopt clean and renewable alternatives to petroleum. Today's fuel mix is more diverse than ever, and we continue to push the clean energy boundaries with further development of hydrogen fuel cells, battery technology, and renewable energy sources like ethanol and biomass. While autonomous vehicles may be grabbing all the headlines these days, we're betting that alternative fuels and advanced power technologies will be fueling the cars of the future and the key to enjoying the freedom of driving the open road for generations to come. Down at Goss's garage, Pat is lacing up and getting ready to bring us some great advice on tires. Most drivers think of tires as being nothing more than round black rubber blobs, but there's a lot more to them than that. And to give us a primer on it, we have our tire expert, Matt Edmonds. Matt, welcome back to Goss's Garage. Pleasure to be here, Pat. All right, tell us a little bit about the different size or different types of tires you have set up here. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, what we've got here today is from Michelin. We've got four different tires, and these are all really performance categories and we're equating them to shoes. Really an easy way for people to grasp the concept of getting the right tire for their vehicle, depending on the conditions and what they need to have. What we have here in the second tire in is actually an all season tire, good in everything, not great in anything. Kind of that pair of shoes that you would wear no matter what the conditions were. And on either side of it, we have really the opportunity to expand and go for something that is really specific to the conditions. Here we have the Michelin XI3, a dedicated winter tire. And on the other side, the Michelin Pilot Sport, which really that Pilot Sport is a tire that's intended for summer, early or late spring, fall, that three season tire, so wet and dry. And down on the far end, the real racy one, signified by the racing shoe is the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2. Mostly for the track. Mostly for the track, but a tire that will work on the street in those warm conditions. Okay, now you're using the term uh, winter tire. A lot of people think of them as snow tires, which they really aren't anymore. Well, they've really evolved. And I mean, starting in the mid 90s, a uh, winter tire is now a tire that not only digs down through the snow, has that capability to get down to the pavement, but also has compounding now that really stays soft and pliable in those cold conditions. Whereas a dedicated summer tire will get very hard and plastic like. This allows the tire to really work when the pavement is cold and dry. Okay, so then the summer tire, uh, I guess the ideal situation here would be to have a dedicated set of winter tires 
and a dedicated set of summer tires. Well, just like you have multiple pairs of shoes to give yourself the ultimate in control and thus safety personally, it's the same thing with the tires. So you have the winter tires that you'd run typically from you know November to April, really when the winter conditions are out there. Uh, and then the summer tires, your three season tires the rest of the year. Matt, thank you. And if you have a question or a comment, drop me a line right here at Motor Week. It's time once again for some quick spin first driving impressions. So let's get rolling. While this might be our first quick spin in the Jaguar XE Compact Sports Sedan, it has already been on sale in the UK for over a year now, and it's off to quite a promising start. We expect the same to happen here on our shores, as it certainly looks the Euro Sports Sedan part. With the long hood, short rear deck, almost squatty stance that will fit right in with competitors like the BMW 3 Series. Under hood is your choice of something old or something new. This 340 horsepower, 3 liter supercharged V6 is old. Newer is a 240 horsepower, 2 liter turbo I4, while newest is a 180 horsepower I4 turbo diesel, also displacing 2 liters. The XE is rear drive, of course, with all wheel drive available if you opt for the V6 or diesel. Much like the rest of the Jag fleet, the structure is highly aluminized. Inside is an equal treatment of familiar and fresh, with traditional elements like the rotary shifter for the 8-speed automatic transmission, as well as hooded twin dial gauges, meeting a new overall layout, and Jaguar's new in-control touchscreen interface, which features much better intuitive action than any Jag before. Some interior materials are a bit disappointing, especially the expansive pebbled plastic dash cover, looking more Toyota Corolla than Jag. Ergonomics are good, except for a couple of expected British eccentricities. But when keeping your eyes and mind focused on the road ahead, there's a lot to love about this compact cat. The supercharged V6 delivers a wealth of mid-range torque that had us looking for reasons to tap into it. And very responsive steering gave us plenty of confidence when curves were quickly approaching. And it does all this while feeling very serene inside the way only a Jaguar can. Pricing for this compact cat starts at just over $35,000 for the i4 Turbo. Quick certainly describes another Jaguar, the 2017 F-Type SVR. Or we could say Jag's muscle car adds more muscle, as it's the first Jaguar to come from Jaguar Land Rover's SVO division following Range Rover last year. And while we love high-performing SUVs as much as the next rich guy, the F-Type makes a lot more sense to us. The formula, less weight, better aero, stiffer suspension, and of course more power, courtesy of simply winding up the supercharger a little more so that it blows more air into the 5 liter V8. The results are 575 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. While unleashing it on a track would have been ideal, our first drive impressions took place in the canyons of Southern California. With the F-Type SVR, Jaguar's special vehicle operations team, has taken the best performance attributes of the F-Type and amplified them. It's lighter, more nimble, more responsive, everything you want in a pure sports car. Weight is still over 3,700 pounds, so it feels more like an American muscle car than Euro Sport Coupe, but that's just fine by us. Think of it as more performance without sacrificing any jagness. It's still playful, still very comfortable and ultra luxurious, yet the exhaust roar on startup gives away this car's true intentions, which is low three seconds, zero to 60s. Even with the increase in power, this chassis easily handles whatever you throw it in, with nice direct steering that means business. Torque vectoring all wheel drive is in play as well. Available in both coupe and convertible forms, the F-Type SVR is rolling into Jaguar showrooms now, priced from around $126,000 for the coupe and $129,000 for the convertible. But don't worry, you'll not only get your money's worth, but there are plenty of unique elements both outside and inside to make this Jag truly special. Stay tuned as we'll have more quick spins soon. 
There's no doubt that Audi has built some beastly beauties over the years, and truth be told, we can't get enough of them. Of course, we got a little giddy when Audi delivered a long, dark, and handsome RS7 for us to try out. What's gotten our automotive hearts all aflutter? Well, let's find out. has long had their own unique take on the German sports sedan theme, basing it on front rather than rear-wheel drive chassis. And while seeing it mature, we've grown to really enjoy their approach. While they have plenty of models to choose from, it's this five-door supercar RS7 that we've taken a particular shine to. When unleashed for 2014, it was the most powerful Audi you could get, eclipsing even the R8. Of course, since then, a new R8 has upped the ante, so this 2016 RS7 gets a host of updates to stay in the game and placate those enthusiasts that always expect more performance. The RS7 is, of course, a high output version of the A7, and along with the middle child S7, all get new front fascias for 16 with full LED headlights. In kind, the rear is updated with new taillights above and trapezoidal exhaust tips below. Functional eye candy includes front and rear splitters and a deploying rear spoiler. Inside, adding to one of the nicest interiors in the biz are color trim and tech updates. Valcona leather seats, carbon fiber trim, and a three-spoke steering wheel with paddle shifters are all part of the package to which you can add an almost $5,000 Bang & Olufsen advanced sound system as well as Alcantara headliner. Old school gauges are still the norm, not the full TFT virtual panel of newer Audis, and we're fine with that. An optional driver assistance package gets you active lane keep and Audi's adaptive cruise control with full stop and go. But it is the new performance package that is the most important news to us and other RS7 fans. It really notches up the prowess of this already super sedan. Starting with the engine, the RS7's 4-liter turbocharged V8 gets a big boost in output of 45 horsepower to 605. Torque with full overboost engaged climbs 37 to 553 pound-feet. The only transmission remains an 8-speed Tiptronic. Performance trim also adds such goodies as 21-inch wheels with 275-30 summer tires, sport exhaust system, dynamic ride control suspension, and even ceramic brakes. To make sure you're fully ready for what this car has to offer, you have to dial up dynamic mode in Audi Drive Select to get the full power out of it. So engaged at our test track, we were off and running. There was a brutal amount of traction off the line dealt by standard Quattro, and from there on out, it was full beast mode with savage amounts of acceleration pouring on seemingly nonstop. The added power was enough to shave a tenth off the zero to 60 we achieved in our last RS7 test, the 3.5 seconds. Clipping a tenth off the quarter mile time as well put us at 11.6 seconds at 123 miles per hour. There's plenty of shifting going on, but that happens lightning quick with no laps in power. If you need more of a rush than this, you'll have to find something with fewer doors and a much higher price tag. There was all kinds of grip for getting through the cones as well, with neutral handling and a well-planted rear. And even when pushing at what we thought were extreme levels, the RS7 seemed to be begging us for more. There's not much on center feel through the steering wheel, but it is ultra quick and nimble. And if all that wasn't enough, 105 feet was all it took to bring this 4,500 pound land shark to a halt from 60 miles per hour with great supercar like feel through the pedal. So not only does the RS7 in performance trim deliver a supercar experience in a luxury sedan package, it does so at a price significantly less than your typical exotic, starting at $129,925. That's only about 20 grand added to an RS7 prestige, so in the rarefied world of extreme performance, that's a bargain. 
At the end of the day, you could look at the 2016 Audi RS7 with Performance Pack as yet another automotive plaything for the rich guy who already has everything. But we prefer to look at it as a mild-mannered super sedan capable of performing superhero-like feats when called upon by a performance-hungry citizen of Motoropolis. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, for more Motor Week, why not check out our podcast, daily news updates, and even complete episodes at pbs.org slash motorweek. And I hope you'll join us next time for a trip down the ultra-fast lane in the Callaway SC757Z06 Corvette. Then we'll see the genesis of Hyundai's new take on the luxury theme with the G90. Till then, I'm John Davis. We'll see you right here on Motor Week. To learn more about Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, visit pbs.org slash motorweek. To order a DVD of this program, call 1-800-873-6154. Motor Week has been brought to you by... Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Just a bottle of water. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. This program was produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content.